This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about what are called tips. These are supposedly an inflation proof investment. TIPS is short for Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. A bunch of you have asked me about this, so finally got around to making a video. Now, as you're going to see, I think TIPS are basically you're taking something fake, you're adding something more fake, and then you create a chart of fake. So you need to know my bias going, going into this. There's obviously inflation. I like this meme about 50 cent being now $2.34. If you want to know more about my take on CPI inflation before you watch this, this video might make more sense if you watch uh, CPI index scam of the century. And also if you watch my video on inflation, government stock, government lies in the stock market, which I'll, I'll link to below. The basic problem with government statistics like the CPI, which is what tips are based on, is that when a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure. This is Goodhart's law, which I talk about in this video. But basically when you have the government trying to manage to a certain index or measurement, it creates a lot of problems. And as we'll see, there are a lot of incentive problems as well with tips. So tips are sort of based off of what's called the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. In this case, they look at urban consumers because most Americans live in big cities, at least population wise. And this is really what the Federal Reserve, this is what uh, the, the, the central bank manages towards. They wanna keep inflation, their stated inflation target is about 2%. And you can see that looking at this chart, they've done a fairly good job of that. If we look at the uh, sort of an average, if we eyeball an average, we can see that if anything, it's been below uh, 2%, but maybe it's around 2%. Again, this is because of Goodhart's law. There's a lot of problems with this. Uh, I've talked about it a little bit in that in um, in this video about the consumer price scam. But if you look at alternate indices of inflation, for example, the Chapwood Index, it puts inflation over the last few years, and it does it really by location, but somewhere between 8 and 11%, depending where you live. Obviously, more inflation in places like New York, Los Angeles, less inflation in a place like Phoenix, but still a high single-digit inflation as opposed to what the government is telling us in the CPI. We'll leave that as it may, but it's important to understand that what we're going to be talking about here is the CPI because this is what tips are based off of. So how do tips work? Again, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities. Well, you buy, let's say you buy a tip at secure, at, at the auction. You can also buy it from your broker. You can buy it in a Schwab account. And as you'll see, I think it's the worst thing you could you could ever buy pretty much. But let's say you uh, it trades at $1,000 when it comes out and it pays a 2% coupon. This means that on a $1,000, on a $1,000, uh, tip bond, you get paid $20 every year. Now this is split into two payments. You get these payments every six months, like most uh, most treasuries. And so in this case, you just take 2% of a thousand. It means you're going to get paid $20 every year. And uh, so you get paid, paid $10. Uh, and then six months later, you get paid another $10. That's how it would sort of work with a regular 10-year treasury, a regular treasury. In this case, this is a tip, so what happens is there's an adjustment that's made to the principal of the bond. So let's say you get paid that first $10, six months passes, and then the government says, okay, what's the inflation rate now as measured by the CPI? Which of course is a statistic that they get to make up, uh, or that the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the BLS, gets to make up. But let's say the BLS says, well, inflation is, uh, is 3% now. So the answer is 3%. So what, do you, what, is, what does a tip do? Well, they adjust the principal by that 3%. And so after six months, instead of the, 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 uh, the value, the principal value of your tip being $1,000, they adjust it up by 3%. So now the value of your tip is 1030 And then you calculate the new, the new interest rate payment based on that new adjusted principal. It's a little weird, but this is how they... This is how it works. And so if the coupon on that bond, and this never changes, the coupon never changes, you're always going to get paid 2% of whatever, whatever the principal is at that moment. So in this case, you'll now get paid 2% of that new adjusted amount. So you'll get paid 2% of $1,030. Uh, again, that's split over over six months. So in this case, you uh, $1,030 times 2% gets you $20.60.
that payment is going to be just half that twenty dollar it's going to be ten dollars and thirty cents so there is an adjustment here for inflation and then again six months later there'll be another adjustment to the principal based on what the cpi has been or is at that moment i'm not sure if it's a trailing or i guess the cpi is always sort of a trailing number it's reported after the fact uh, but basically the thing to know about tips is that they adjust the principal based on what uh, what inflation is, or I should be more precise and say, they get to adjust the principal based on what they themselves say that inflation is, which is again, already problematic when it comes to the idea of uh, the problems with uh, incentives. And no one is, as we've learned, no one is better than their incentives in most cases. Now, what happens when the bond matures? Well, in this case, you get uh, you either get $1,000 back, the original face value, assuming you bought it at auction, or you get that adjusted higher principal amount. Now, the reason for this, so in this case, would be this thing will keep adjusting every six months. It'll keep moving higher as long as CPI inflation is higher, and you'll get that amount back at the end. So it seems like a good deal. As we will see, though, the government gets to pick the inflation rate, and... Uh, and also the, the interest rates, the actual coupons are much lower than 2%. So if there is CPI deflation, if you get a negative CPI number, and we can see that there were definitely uh, definitely places, uh, and the CPI is probably going to go negative in the next, uh, the next report, but in 2000, late 2014, 2015, we actually got a negative CPI number. So in that case, if you have a negative CPI number, Let's say this is a minus 3% CPI. In that case, your, um, your principal will go from uh, $1,000 to being adjusted down to nine, uh, 970. And then the interest rate will be calculated based on that. So CPI, a tip, it, the principal can adjust up if there's positive inflation. It can adjust down if there is deflation or negative inflation, as you might call it. But the good news is even if this adjusts down, even if there's a lot of deflation and this eventually adjusts, adjusts down to uh, 800, let's say it's a 10-year bond and it just keeps a 10-year tip, it keeps adjusting downwards, you don't have to worry about this adjusting downwards uh, simply because you will get the $1,000 back when it matures. Now, if you sell it before it matures, uh, it could be trading really anywhere. And so that's one th another thing to keep in mind. Now, the, the reason the government likes tips and the reason a lot of economists like tips is they allow you to calculate what's called a break-even inflation rate. Now, it's very simple the way this is calculated. You just take, if you want to calculate, for example, the 10-year break-even inflation rate, you take the regular 10-year treasury, you take that yield, and then you subtract the 10-year tips yield. So you want to use the same maturity in both cases. If we're interested in the market's best guess about what inflation will be over the next 10 years, we would use the 10-year, uh, we would try to calculate the 10-year break-even inflation rate. We just did take the yield of the 10-year treasury minus the yield of the 10-year tip. Again, this is what we would say the market's best guess at what inflation will be over that 10 years, over the life of the bond. Now, why is it called a break-even inflation rate? Well, simply because if CPI inflation, as measured by the government, and we know we can trust them, of course, if CPI inflation is at that break-even rate over the life of the bond, you will receive the same return on a TIPS bond as you would on a regular 10-year Treasury government bond. So that's why it's called the break-even rate, because if the inflation turns out to be at that level, again, as measured by the BLS, you will, you're, you're pretty much agnostic whether you hold a TIPS bond or a 10-year Treasury. Now, if inflation is going to be lower than that rate, in that case, you want to own a regular 10-year note Treasury regular treasury bond. If inflation is going to be higher than that break-even inflation rate, you'll want to own the 10-year tips. So this is basically how uh, this is set up so that the market itself will calculate the 10-year uh, break-even inflation rate, which is theoretically a useful number. So here we have a chart of the 10-year note yield. Uh, obviously, it's fallen off a cliff as treasury bonds and treasury notes Treasuries in general have, have rallied in COVID, the Fed cutting interest rates, doing more quantitative easing, et cetera. So these used to be, uh, the 10-year note used to trade right around 2%, 2.5%, and now it's currently at 0.72%. Again, this is the yield on a constant maturity 10-year 10 10-year note. So that'd be the regular 10-year treasury. Here's the yield on a, on a tip, uh, inflation indexed security. We can see that back in 
2016, the yield on the tips, on the 10-year tip went negative, went negative again in the third quarter of 2019, and now it's firmly negative with a lot of crazy uh, volatility along the way. These are giant moves. Now, what does it mean when the, uh, when the treasury, the tip yield goes negative? Well, basically, if you remember how we calculated this for the break-even inflation rate, you're just gonna take the 10-year treasury yield minus the tips yield. But if the tips yield is negative, you're gonna be subtracting a negative number, which is again, the same as adding. Again, there's no, uh, at least theoretically, if there is deflation, if the CPI is negative, you will be, uh, you won't really mind that you're losing money on your tip because your money will be purchasing, because of deflation, the same amount of money will purchase more goods. But basically, to, ca to calculate that 10 year break even inflation rate, regular 10 year treasury minus the 10 year tips. And so you can basically take this chart minus this, ch this chart, and that gives you uh, uh, the, the Fed does this for us. This is the 10 year break-even inflation rate. So again, this is the, the forward 10-year inflation rate as prophesied, we might say, by the TIPS market combined with the regular treasury market. And we can see, as you would guess, that this has been hovering really around 2%. The Fed wants to look like it's doing a good job. And so we would expect this, when, you, when the Fed tells you, when the central bank tells you that their inflation target forever is going to be 2%, well, you probably want to price the break-even inflation rate around 2%. And that's really where it's been. It's been uh, sort of hovering. It's been a little more on the deflationary side. And we can see that it's really fallen off a cliff recently. It got down to, call it point, uh, 0.5 on this. Uh, so again, expecting inflation of just half a percentage point over the next 10 years. And it has since rebounded back up to 1.2%. Again, this is telling you, uh, at least according to this calculation, that there are deflationary pressures. Again, remember how we started this. You, this uh, all these charts are you take a fake, you add some more fake, then you create a chart of fake. So keep, keep that in mind. But I want you to know uh, how sort of mainstream economists would interpret this. So we can, we can use tips to calculate the 10-year break-even inflation rate, the five-year break-even inflation rate. We would just use a regular five-year treasury note and a five-year tip. And again, this looks like it's around the same place, around 1.2 and the 30-year treasury, the 30-year break-even inflation rate. Again, if inflation over the next 10, over the next 30 years is 1.46%, so again, a little bit below the Fed's 2% target, if the, the inflation rate, the CPI PI inflation rate is around 1.46, you will be, you won't care whether you own a regular government bond, 30-year government bond, or a 30-year tip. So I'll link to all these charts. You can also get these numbers from Bloomberg. You can look up, I'll link to this, but you can basically take the treasury yield here so we can look at the 10-year note, uh, the, te the, the, uh, the uh, yield on it, and then we can look at the equivalent on the 10-year note uh, tip, which as we said, is negative. Now, what are the problems with this? Well, I've already hinted at it, but the treasury break-even rate is the market's best guess. I mean, it's considered the market's best guess at what inflation will be over the life of the bond. But, but I think the, the, the correct way actually to interpret it is it's the market's best guess. This gets a little meta. It's the market's best guess as to what the BLS, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is who puts out the CPI. It's the market's best guess as to what the BLS will say inflation is as measured by their totally fake CPI. Now... The problem with letting the government measure something and then pay you based on that measurement is that they're hugely incentivized to understate that inflation rate, that break-even inflation rate. Because the less they, uh, the lower the inflation rate is, the less that principle adjusts upwards with tips. Now, the government itself, the federal government, the U.S. government, is incentivized to create inflation simply because inflation is good when you have a lot of debt. If you have a lot of credit card debt, if you have a lot of student student loan debt, you hope that there's a lot of inflation because you'll get to f pay off that fixed amount of debt with devalued future dollars. And the US government's the same way. We have 26 trillion in federal debt. This isn't counting local or state debt. Plus we have all these future obligations. A future obligation is essentially a form of debt in the form of Social Security and Medicare. I have a couple of videos about this if you search for them. 
So the, we have this problem here where the government gives us a security. They say, we're going to hedge out inflation risk for you, but we get to tell you what the inflation rate is. And at the same time, we're hugely incented, incentivized to create inflation, to bail ourselves out. So this is the real problem with tips. Why would you ever trust, um, why would you ever trust the government to calculate that inflation number for you? And uh, just the, all the incentives work the wrong way, not even uh, not to mention the problems with Goodhart's law, where this this measurement is being actively managed by the Fed and uh, the, the BLS keeps changing their inflation basket to adjust it. So there are just many, many problems when someone their, their observer effects, essentially, when you have someone observing a measurement and trying to use it as a target. So these are this is the problem with the human sciences this is the problem with economics. But the good news is we don't have to mess with tips. There's no reason ever to own these things. There's no reason really ever to lend money to the U.S. government. Uh, I'm not a big fan of doing that, especially when interest rates are very, very low. But the good news is there are two things that are better than tips and where you don't have to trust the Bureau of Labor Statistics or the Fed to make everything right for you. And those are gold, obviously, and Bitcoin as well. And obviously, Bitcoin is a little, um, a little more desired by millennials and um, and Gen Gen Z. The other nice thing about Bitcoin is it's uh, much easier to store. It's easier to transfer. It's easier to pay with. It's easier to verify, uh, etc. So I have lots of lots of uh, videos on Bitcoin, which I'll link to as well. But I wanted to give you a, uh, you guys an idea again about how the CPI inflation works, how fake it is. Uh, and also why tips are really, I'll call them uh, terrible tips. There, there's really no inflation protection in here. It's a very meta game that's being played simply because of Goodhart's Law and because uh, all the incentives cut the wrong way. Hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Hope you guys are doing well and staying well. And I'll see you in the next video.